Welcome back to TC911 Beyond the Call. I'm your host, Abby Dudek. And if you're joining me for the first time, welcome and thanks for listening. Now, I am finishing up our the interviews that I'm doing with all of our staff. We only have one more podcast left where you'll meet two of our newest staff members, and that's going to be next Monday. And until then, I am going to talk to you about the American Heart Association Cycle Nation event that Tarrant County 911 District is a proud sponsor of. It's going to be held May 18th at Texas Live in Arlington. Parking is free. That's right. I know that's my first thing with any event here in the Metroplex. I'm always thinking to myself, okay, where do I park? How much is it? Because that can be really frustrating. I completely understand that. But parking is free. It's the big lot that's right next to Texas Live. If you haven't been there before, you should totally go because it's just an amazing place. There's going to be a lot of different activities in this event for Cycle Nation. Myself and my support services manager, Levi, will be riding our stationary bikes. The ride begins at 5 p.m. You may have seen Mr. Levi on our videos that we've been putting out to promote this event. He is quite the character. I highly enjoy him being such a go-getter and helping me and and Jake, my intern, produce these videos because he is just fabulous. And he's just got an amazing spirit to come out and ride with me also. I also have a couple of headset heroes from another 911 center in our, in, in our district that will also be joining me. And we get to decorate our bikes too. So I think I'm going to go with a thin gold line motif, you know, keep it in the family. This is the second year that Tarrant County 911 District is is a sponsor for this event. Um, Last year I rode and it was such an amazing, amazing experience and I really enjoyed it and I rode the whole time. So it's like a spin class, if you will. You have instructors who are amazing and very fun and energetic. You just ride. Now, I'm not saying it's intense and or anything like that. It's it's not military style or anything like you can just ride at your own pace. They encourage you to, of course, you know, put up the, you know, put more pressure on your bike and to make it a little bit more difficult, but you don't have to. I like to ride for the entire time because this particular event is very near and dear to my heart, pun intended. (laughs) I am so excited to, to be a part of this again and to have Levi and two other headset heroes riding with me this year. So that really means a lot. So May 18th, I would arrive out there by four o'clock. I know that I'll be out there by 3.30 getting ready. There's a lot of socializing, networking. They have uh, different, they'll have different activities for all members of the family. And of course, the most important, most important thing is awareness, education on stroke, heart attack, cardiovascular diseases. Uh, they use FAST to help you remember of signs of a stroke and when it's time to call 911. FAST stands for face droopage, arm weakness, slurred speech, and time to call 911. So it's important to know that information in case you or someone who's with you is showing signs of a stroke to immediately call or text 911. And again, yes, I did say you can text your emergency. So just like calling, the 911 operator needs your location. So please give us a business give the 911 caller a business name or address, or if you're in a park, cross streets, landmarks, whatever you can find, you can see that will help know your, help better know you where your location is at. It's also important to try to stay calm as, as much as you can. I know that that's a scary experience, whether it's you that's having a stroke or heart attack or someone you're with is having a stroke or heart attack. Trust me, I completely get it. This is personal to me also. So it's important to try to stay calm and to remember to breathe. Even if it's with someone else, you need to breathe also and try to stay calm for them also. Stay on the line and the 911 dispatcher is going to be able to give you pre-arrival instructions that can save someone's life. If you are not CPR certified and that is something that you have on your checklist to get done at some point, You can go to heart.org. That's going to be the American Heart Association's website. And they have a a link you can go to and you can actually put your location no matter where you're at. It will 
uh, tell you where you can go in your area to get CPR certified. They also have a lot of great printable materials and other articles and stories that you can read regarding CPR and the importance of learning that. The website also includes so many different uh in so much information about diff cardiovascular diseases, heart diseases, and the importance of, of knowing the signs, the symptoms, risk factors, to educate yourself to live better. You know, and again, I did mention this was personal to me, and we'll go into that here in a little bit. But it's important to know that regardless if it runs in your family or not, it's very important to talk to your doctors and have things checked out be proactive. It's always best to, you know, if you do have something to get it early and then to get the treatment that you need that, so that way it doesn't get worse. And again, we'll go into it in a little bit, but that is very near and dear to my heart so that to let you know that it's important to advocate for yourself. So if you go to a doctor and you're not really comfortable with the answers or you feel like there's just more to it, go to another doctor, get another opinion. If that doesn't work, go to another one and go to the, get another opinion. We're in the Metroplex, folks. There are tons of fabulous men and women in the medical profession, and you can go see so many of them. So the options are there. Again, I'm so grateful for Tarrant County 911 District to be a sponsor again this year. It's going to be a lot of fun, not only to spread the awareness of the importance of, of quickly calling 911 in the event of a heart attack or stroke for you or someone else. Spreading awareness of cardiovascular health, vascular health, and like I said, get on their website, see what and what information you can take from that. And again, they have so much stuff you can print out. So if you're part of an organization, you know, neighborhood association, or anything that's gonna involve the community, this education is good all year round. Yes, February is America is heart month, and that's always a great time to do it. Heart disease and vascular diseases, they don't see time, they don't see a month. So awareness all the time, I think is going to be okay. And I actually definitely am for that. So I did talk about how this is personal to me. Rode my bike a lot during the pandemic. I started doing, I started riding my bike in early 2020 because I'm an extrovert and I just couldn't stay cooped up in the house anymore. So got the bike out. It was like, okay, I'm going to go down to Trinity River and, and ride. And it was the best decision I ever made. And it's interesting that I say that because that decision actually saved my life. Not even knowing it, saved my life, saved my leg. Again, this event is also a great way to spread awareness of my own cardiovascular, my own vascular disease, peripheral artery disease also known as PAD, and I'll refer to it as PAD for the rest of this chat. So I saved my life and my leg by riding my bike so much during the pandemic. I lived with a lot of pain, excruciating pain in my leg. When you have PAD, uh, it's peripheral, so you it affects your limbs, your legs. Your legs are, the legs are usually the ones that are affected, but when you get your tests done, they do a brachial test, an ABI test, they'll test your arms also. So I would ride miles after miles after miles and I would ride through the pain. The pain actually started in April of 2018. It actually started in between my toes. From there, I thought it was something. So I went to a, a foot doctor and they were like, well, maybe Morton's Neuroma, change your shoes, wear comfortable shoes. So I started wearing Brooks and those were very comfortable and it helped a little bit, but it didn't take the pain away. The pain then as, and we're talking months going by and I went to doctor after doctor to figure out what was going on because the pain was in my calf only when I, when I would walk short distances. I mean, short distances, like from maybe one end of your hallway to the other, depending on how big your house is. And the more time went on that I wasn't getting treated for this or a diagnosis wasn't found, it got worse. Uh, it got so worse that my foot, my, this is all my right leg and my foot was going blue. My leg was like an ashy color and sometimes it was really shiny. I thought this has to be, maybe it's a pinched nerve. There's something in my back, you know, cause your body is just one wacky roller coaster you never know what it could be because I don't know if you've ever had it, but you might have like a, you're like, oh, my back hurts. And then the actual pain is from something else on the other side. And your doctor tells you and you're like, okay, 
great, had no idea. So I didn't know if it was something like that. And it was stemming from somewhere else in my body. Little did I know, and come to find out, and when I found out all the answers in December of 2020, that toe pain uh, that I felt in my toe was a blood clot. And it turns out my body was throwing out blood clots like a poker deal or hands out cards. That is just, yeah. when I got told that, I immediately just kind of looked up and I was like, well, that's a problem. So that's what that was. And of course, didn't know it at the time. During those three years, two and a half years before I got diagnosed, because it was, two, like I said, it was 2000, April of 2018 when I first heart started noticing pain. So I didn't know how long it had been before then that this started to build up in my leg and the problems started happening. I went to so many doctors, like I said, and you're probably thinking, well, how did nobody see this? How did nobody... No. Well, when you go to American Heart Association's website and you start educating yourself about this disease, it's it's known as a silent killer. They it, the disease typically is in adults 60 year and older who smoke, who have diabetes, and I see high blood pressure, it runs in the family, a lot of a lot of like lack of if you don't move a lot, like if you don't exercise a lot, you know, have a poor diet. This can, this can happen with throwing blood clots and then the, the disease basically building up plaque in your arteries. It's, it's, it's going to be something that eventually, if you don't get it treated, it can kill you by a stroke or you, you can lose your limbs. At the time, they didn't, they didn't look at that because I wasn't, I was 37 and I didn't have a family history of any of that. I didn't have any medical problems. I mean, the only thing I've ever had prior to having this disease was I had cavity, a cavity. That was, that's it. That's the extent of my medical journey. You know, I, I'm not someone who it would be a poster person for peripheral artery disease. And the main message that I want to tell everybody is that doesn't mean it can't happen for someone. You know, I don't want to scare people and be like, oh gosh, watch out for everything because age doesn't matter, risk factors don't matter because look at me. I always call it back pocket information. Always just put it in your back pocket. You you go to the doc, hopefully you go to the doctor every year for checkups and, you know, if you start experiencing different pains and, and everything, and this is specific, okay? I'm not talking like when you get a Charlie horse or you cramp or something. It's, if, if you're getting to a a worst case of PAD, which I actually have. So there's uh, there's different levels of it. And I had the most severe case of it. I have uh, critical limb ischemia, which the next move would have been amputation. And that was what, in December of 2020, that was what my surgery was, was a uh, femoral to tibial bypass, basically for them to save my leg. And because I rode my bike so much, the one little vein that was left in my leg, just, you know, the engine that could in there gave enough blood to keep that leg, that keep that leg alive. Prior to that, going to all these doctors, I also started noticing as a year, a couple of years went by, um, I had problems breathing. I'd have like diff- difficult breathing times. Like I was, it was interesting. I would have uh, shortness of breath. I would start having chest pain and I just feel that since this disease festered in my body for almost three years without any treatments, that it just did some damages. And it breaks my heart. That's why I am such a big, I, I just love to spread, I keep, I keep spreading awareness about it because I don't want anybody to go through what I've gone through and what I continue to go through. You know, they, I'm called a survivor, but I'm not a survivor because I'm not, I'm not cured. There's no cure for it. You're just slowing down the process. And with further research, it's found that if you're younger and have peripheral artery disease, it is more intense. It, it, the process goes faster. And so I was like, great. So, um, so I am a very, I'm rare. It's very rare. Uh, I when uh, when I started going to the place that I go to get uh, my test and who's operated on me and and uh, really taking care of me and I, I love them. 
I love him to death. Uh, I'm going to respect and not say who it is uh, on this podcast, but uh, it's it, they saved my life and helped me with so much others. And it wasn't just helping me with going through this as medically, but it was also emotionally. They were so caring and they saw how scared I was. And because again, I had nothing before this. So well, we rewind, we rewind back again, went to so many doctors. They thought it was nerves. They thought it was um, like muscular, uh, different things there and just no answers. And the pain started getting so bad. I mean, bad. Like I would go out and do the 9-1 events. Um, I know you, if you do follow us on Facebook, you see me out on all these different events. I was doing that in excruciating pain because Again, if you have this leg pain, it's noticeable, but it goes away immediately when you sit down. The weird part of it, it was that even it would be, you would get relief if you, when you sat down and rested your leg, but at night, the pain was even worse. And I didn't understand that. I had to sleep sitting up. And I think from 2019, probably late 2019 to when I, had the big first surgery, I don't think I got more than two hours of sleep at night. It was just so bad. And I would hang my leg off my bed. I would try to get relief. I would move out into the living room, into a recliner to see if that helped because there was no blood flow. There was no correct blood flow in there. So when you're laying down and you only have one good tiny, tiny little vein in there going, okay, I need some backup. It's it's so painful because it's trying so hard to, you know, feed that blood through other parts of your, of your leg. And I remember just crying because I was like, what is wrong with me? How come nobody can find out what's going on with me? Am I going to have to live like this forever? And it was extremely tough. I didn't say anything to anybody really about it because I had no idea what it was. Uh, and again, going back, I, so I understand why a lot of the doctors I saw didn't to think about that because I wasn't a typical person that would have that. I wasn't, I didn't have any of the risk factors. I wasn't the right age. Again, it's important to, regardless, it's important to go talk to your doctors about anything that you have so they can run tests and, 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 and maybe run these tests. And maybe you hearing this podcast might maybe shine a light on something. I mean, I hope it's not what you have, but then I hope it's, then you catch it early or they catch it early where maybe you just need a stent put in and nothing major at this time for it. Because I think just, it's been, it'll be three years this uh, Christmas because I had my, when I was finally teamed up with the uh, folks that I go to now, uh, it was December of 2020. And then I had my femoral to tibial bypass uh, December 21st of 2020. And even almost three years later, wait, is that three years? Like, because everybody knows, if you listen to my podcast, you know, math is not my thing. So, so yeah, it'll be three years this December. I try not to get too emotional about it, but it's really tough. So yes, I'm having some emotions now. I have emotions when I talk about it and because it was such a tough, tough time. And with that, I definitely get emotional to the fact that I, the one thing I keep thinking about is if we caught it early, if someone caught it early, like in 2018, even 19, would it have been as bad as it was? Would I had to go through everything that I have gone through with this disease? And that's when I finally said to myself, I am not going to stay quiet about this. I'm telling everybody. I am spreading awareness out there because no one deserves to go through this. So with that, I just started talking about it. I started with my uh, job for Tarrant County 911 and was telling my staff, my coworkers about it. I put it out to all of the dispatch centers that we have in our district area and our over 700 dispatchers and 
because they have jobs where they sit a lot and that can also cause blood clots too. So I'm very transparent with them. They know about every time I have to have surgeries and yes, surgeries. So since 2020 until today, I've had five um, surgeries and two of them being the bypass. My last bypass was October of 2022. So for this year, I have a phrase that I say is surgery free in 23. So I'm hoping that that will stay true. I almost made it last year, almost. And I ended up uh, in, on the table again in, I think it was in some, early September or August. Yeah, it's a September. And they were going to uh, balloon stent or stent me again. And I don't get it through the wrist. Um, I've had that procedure a, a lot and they go through the groin, which is makes it a little bit more dangerous because it's the one that you, it's only about like an hour, half, two hours. And then you have to lay flat on your back for four hours and you can't move. That stinks. <laughs> it's, it's not the best time I could think of other 50,000 other things I'd rather do. But uh, so after that, they, they, medical team I work with, they made the decision of, we need to do another bypass. And when you hear those words and you've been, you've been going through this for so long and you've been doing everything right. You've been staying active. You take your medications. I'm on different blood thinners. I take um, all sorts of medicines to keep heart attack and stroke at bay, including I have to, I do the repath stick where you have to stick yourself every other week to, you know, keep that, keep the heart attack and stroke away and uh, live another day. Been doing all of that. I changed my diet. I do predominantly all plant-based now. I read labels. I read labels. I read so much now on labels more than I ever read in any time I went to school. (laughs) So I, I will admit that. So I constantly check labels. I constantly look at what the cholesterol is, what the sodium level is, what the sugar level is. Is there added sugars? What are the percentages per serving? You know, what's the most dominant thing on that, on that label? And when you've been doing everything right and you have to go back again and again, it's, it's so scary because the prognosis, I mean, things that I've been reading is that when someone has critical limb ischemia, their prognosis is death five years from diagnose, from being diagnosed. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, you know, it's 2025. And that's like right around the corner. And we all know how time flies. But I also start thinking, you know, maybe that's someone who isn't really taking care of themselves. And maybe that's a different situation. But when I kept having to go in and they kept being problem after problem, it got really discouraging. And I'm overall a pretty positive person, but I have to admit my weaknesses. And so one of my weaknesses, I was starting to kind of, you know, slide down that sadness off ramp and, and just kind of be like, am, am I going to have a leg in a year? Am I going to be alive in two years? Because when I got the news in December of 2020 of what it was, actually, I went to get my first ABI, the brachial test that we talked about. And all that is, is, um, and you can ask your doctor if you can schedule to have that done and they can test for peripheral artery disease and make sure that all your blood flow is, is super and, and everything and all your highways are flowing right. And they take the blood pressure cuffs and they put them on your arms and your legs. And I had chuckle. I, I, I use humor a lot <laughs> because laughter is the best medicine. And they take these little blood, there's like tiny little blood pressure cuffs for your to, your big toe. And for some reason, even three years later, that just cracks me up. Like every time they put it on, I just laugh like a dork because I just think it's so funny. It's like a blood pressure cuff for like a hamster. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, anyway, good times. Um, so when I first went in there and it was early December, they uh, did all that and they had the speaker on so you can hear the blood flow and I could hear it in my left leg, did the left leg. They're like, okay, you know, 
good here, can hear that. They did the right leg and nothing came out. Like I could there was no sound. And you know, I'm gonna tell you one thing, that that tech person had one heck of a poker face because you know that I think it was a gal, she looked at that and was like, Oh, um, bad times. But even though I have no medical experience and no education in that, I laid there and I remember just thinking, oh man, I don't hear anything. I'm, I, I, there's a problem. And I remember just starting to tear up because I knew that I really had a bad deal going on. And I met the vascular surgeon um, the very next day. I think it was the day or the day after. I think it was like December 8th. Um, excuse me why I keep uh, <laughs> trying to be like, oh yeah, it was this day. Um, and I'll never forget that day because that was the day that changed my life. Uh, you know, you never, you always think you, you, we always think that we know how we would act when certain things happen. And I think that's false. I think we try to, but you really don't know how you're going to act until it happens. You know, like, oh, I know how I would act if I have to call 911 or I know how I would act I'd do that. And I'm like, do you though? I, cause it's okay to be scared and it's okay to show emotion. And this was really tough. I was by myself because again, it was 2020. So it's not like you can take people out of the hospital with you. So, uh, my vascular surgeon came in, she came in like a wrecking ball, I had to say, <laughs> so <laughs> came in and was like, okay, tell me everything from the beginning. And, um, after I told everything, she, uh, <clears throat> She told me that she was really amazed uh, that I still had my leg, that I wasn't dead, because uh, I am on already in the red to have a stroke. It was the blockages were so far up my leg and going into close to my, it could have gone into my intestines, could have thrown a blood clot in there. Uh, telling me that my body was throwing blood clots all over, but it was interesting because they were my body just like just accepted them, and me being me, I, I was like, oh well, I'm a I'm a pretty accepting person, so shows in all different aspects. But um, at that time, I just was like, my life will never be the same, never be the same, and I was so scared because I immediately was thinking, am I going to die? Is this, is this it? I mean, I I don't have a cavity. I'll take six cavities and a root canal over this. And she was, she was brilliant. Um, she knew how to handle the situation. Said, I can fix your leg. We're going to save your leg. Okay. You're not going to lose your leg. You're not going to lose your leg today. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're going to get you back to being stable. And she said, she goes, you know, riding your bike was the best thing that you did. That that pretty much saved your life and your, it saved your leg, definitely. Um, so I try to take moments to say, hey, way to go, Abby. You know, you should be proud of yourself because even though you, you rode through all that pain, I rode through all that pain. I did all those events with that pain. I did everything with so much pain. And it was... It was, there, there was going to be something out of it, which means I get to keep my leg and I get to live another day and see my family and see my friends and, you know, do wonderful things in the community here in Tarrant County and continue working a job that I love. So had the big femoral, femoral to tibial bypass December 21st of 2020 was a, um, well, I was asleep, so it wasn't that bad. But um, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty painful, pretty painful recovery, because they want to make sure that you keep on moving. So they cut me from, like, um, basically hip, hip bone, uh, all the way down to, basically groin area to down to my ankle, and um, uh, sometimes it feels like did it happen, and then sometimes it feels like so long ago, and then sometimes it feels like it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> So it uh, was a it's a it was a hard recovery, but I had a lot of support, and people were just coming out of the woodwork and you know 
I love making people happy. I love doing things for people. And, uh, it was, it was so nice, you know, getting those words of encouragement from people and people would leave things on my doorstep. Cause again, this is COVID. So it was even tougher, but I guess the positive thing out of that was it was COVID and we were separated because remember I had to go to the hospital all the time. So I constantly had to test for COVID every time I went to the hospital. So every time they were like, Oh, you gotta come back next week. So get ready for your COVID test. I'd have to have that thing shoved up my schnoz so they can test for COVID. And, uh, I got used to it, but, um, so I was thankful that I had never, I'd never gotten it. And I was able to keep going to the hospital and have these procedures and have, cause I had to have all this testing beforehand and all sorts of heart testing. And I, cause I told him, I'm like, I'm breathing weird. My heart's doing funky things. I can't walk, you know, I'm like a hot mess. Okay. It's, um, it's been one heck of a journey and what keeps me going is the support I get from Tarrant County 911 district. Our staff is so great. Uh, my friends, my family, and just doing what I'm doing right now is educating because if I can help save one life or one limb, it makes this journey worth it to me. And I wouldn't change a thing. And if I had a choice to rewind and not have it, I wouldn't change it because I would rather take this and, and, and spread awareness than maybe someone who may not be a comfortable and do as comfortable as doing that. And I want to take that from them be like, okay, you know what? I'll take it and I'll, I'll help spread awareness. I, I got it. Not a problem because it's, it's hard. And again, it's a silent killer. Please educate yourself about it. Talk to your family, you know, ask what's, what kind of cardiovascular, vascular and heart diseases run in your family and, and women it's, you know, heart disease is, is one of the number one killers in women. And it runs differently in women, too, than it does with men. So, again, a lot of this education, American Heart Association has helped me out so much and other vascular uh, nonprofit organizations. And the education's out there. There's help out there. You know, I'm, I'm very open to, to talking about it more if there are specific things you have questions about or you have comments, you know, please contact me. I'm a very transparent, I'm very, an open book, if you will, about this because it's important to share this, this information. And you can reach me at publiced at tc911.org. You could message me on any of our social media platforms. I'll be able to get the message there. And again, don't hesitate. Uh, All questions are good questions. And again, it's so important to talk to your family or talk to your doctors and ask them questions. That's what they're there for. Ask away. You know, utilize all of that great education they have. (laughs) You know, get your money's worth out of it. And again, it's okay to say, you know what, maybe I'm not comfortable with what answer I got from this doctor, so I'm going to go to another doctor. And I did that eight times, okay? (laughs) Eight times before I found my answers. And I was at my wit's end at that point, and I almost stopped. I almost was going to give up and just think, well, this is my life. I have to live with this pain. And I guess I just have to. And I always thought, well, someone has it worse, so I just need to shut up about it and just live my life and, and deal with it. And you are the biggest advocate for yourself and you know your body better than anyone else. So if, if feels something isn't right, if something feels off pain, whatnot, speak up, speak loud. It's your body. It's your life. And you know what? Some people in the medical profession, mistakes do do happen, and that's okay. That is totally okay. That's why you have to help them to be an advocate for yourself, okay? They can't do everything. You know, you have to speak up. You have to, you know, maybe if this one maybe isn't the right fit, then we go to someone else, and that is completely okay. And if I didn't do that, we wouldn't be having this conversation because I wouldn't be here. And I'm so thankful and I know this sounds weird, but it's, there's, there's a positive 
that comes out of this disease that's such a negative is one, I'm a fighter and I'm not a survivor, I'm surviving. And I vow to take care of myself and to keep pushing, to keep my body moving, to keep enjoying life. And because of this, and I'll never forget the words that were told to me, like, you should be dead. You shouldn't have, how do you have a leg? I can't believe this. Wow. It changed my life. I did a lot of different changes in my life to be a better Abby, to live the life that Abby deserves and travel more and just really see the good that's all around us that sometimes I think we miss because unfortunately there is so much negative in the world. But just to see all the fabulous people that are there that can help you and, and help you along this process. And and I give a nice, great big shout out to all of my my support system buddies and and everyone who they know who they are, who were so supportive and were very smart to know that I was struggling. I was struggling inside. And I'm trying to keep, I always try to keep my face on like Wonder Woman, you know, I got this, but my, my, the people in my life are pretty smart <laughs> and, and they knew that, okay, it's a little tougher. We're just going to check on her. We're going to make sure. So I just kept going. And the reason why I kept going, my family, my friends, my job, this community, I love, I love my job. I love being out in the community and seeing everyone. And now you know why this event is so important. I know we've talked about it or it's been mentioned before on our social media, but I really wanted to do this podcast to um, help educate and uh, spread awareness on peripheral artery disease. And again, I have critical limb ischemia, the worst case of it, and uh, not having any risk factors. I think it's really important to, to get this message out there. So that is why I am so grateful for the American Heart Association to have this Cycle Nation event. Again, it's riding bikes, which is near and dear to my heart and which I still actively do. I would do it today, but it's kind of rainy. <laughs> so I am just so honored to ride again and I appreciate the ones who will be riding with me and I'm looking forward to continue doing this for years to come. Years to come because I, I'm not going down without a fight and I will uh, keep doing everything that I need to. And most recently, we're going to end this. Uh, well, most recently, I got some tests back and we're going to end this podcast on a good note. Um, and I recently had some tests done. I had some pain and everything. So I was like, oh, I got to go back and find out what's going on. And everything looks great. My bypasses are looking great. Everything is flowing and grooving along. And I even got an MRI done with contrast and everything is, is good. I do have blockages and it did affect my left leg, but not as severely as the right. I do have blockages still, but they have been, your body can find ways to reroute it and it's not a problem right now. So hopefully with... The help of the American Heart Association, and this is how important it is to donate. Um, you can donate to our team, and I will put the link and everything in the description so that you can donate to our team if you like. You can donate to me or Levi. Um, Levi needs some confident boots, so let's let's donate to Levi's Levi's team. <laughs> so um, just even a little amount could go a long way. And again, there is no cure for this. You're slowing down the process. And I'm doing everything I can to continue to slow down that process. And your dollar, five dollars, hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever you want to do, whatever you can do, you know, that that may be the point where they find something to stop it. And I would be grateful for that. <laughs> and I, I'm sure so many other people would. And maybe that might help with doing research on how to find ways to detect it before it gets it gets bad. So with that being said, I, I wanted to leave on a positive note to let you all know that uh, my latest tests have been great. I feel like I got an A plus, um, which I, I love because I, I was kind of a C student <laughs> in high school. So I, did, I got it. I feel like I got an A plus, which I'll take that when it comes to my uh, my health. So 
So I hope that um, I didn't do anything to scare you or to you know frighten you of, of anything. I just want to help spread awareness and share my story. I hope to see you out on May 18th at uh, the Cycle Nation event at, at Texas Life in Arlington. And thanks again, a special shout out to my executive director, Sherry Decker, for continuing to sponsor this, uh, for Tarrant County 911 District to be a sponsor. And for all of you to remember that when you have a signs of heart attack or stroke, to call 911 immediately. And that 911 dispatcher will help, help you save a life. So until next time, I hope that you have a fabulous week. <laughs>